All right, so 12 o'clock, we'll get started here. So hello everyone, and I hope that uh, you're all doing well. Today we have another student presentation from Wei Dong Li about an innovative system built to load helical piles axially in the centrifuge system here at the U of A. Before Wei Dong gets started, I just want to mention a few things. Uh, Vivian has created a new LinkedIn profile for the Geotechnical Center at the U of A. We'll post a link in the chat so everyone can check it out. So check it out, follow, and uh, mark yourself as an employee if you feel so inclined. Um, the U of A CGS student chapter also released uh, their October newsletter uh, recently, which touches on the life of Carl Terzaghi in honor of Terzaghi Day this month, and also on the importance of cultivating our mental health. And of course, I'm still looking to sign up more students to present about their research in the new year. Please contact either myself or Vivian if you wish to present. All right, so Wei Dong Li is a doctoral candidate here at the U of A who has spent the last several years working on the research of soil pile interactions using field load tests, centrifuge modeling, and finite element analysis. He also has been involved in a commercial engineering project working alongside Almeda Piling, all of which has led to him gaining skills and knowledge about geotechnical engineering and research. Please join me in welcoming Wei Dong. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today in this show. A couple of years ago, I did more than four Sorry, I have a problem here. Can you guys hear the, the video playing? Yeah, it was working on my end. Okay, I received a message here that it was, wasn't working, so I'll try again. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today in this show. A couple of years ago, I did more than 40 field load tests of helical piles for my master's degree. The data processing caused a lot of pain because the failure mechanisms were very difficult to characterize due to the lack of load distribution data and the complex institute soil properties. Then I and my supervisor, Dr. Deng, came up with an idea of centrifuge modeling with the fully instrumented helical piles. Now four years passed and the idea was realized. Today I will present my main work and findings to you guys and hope we all learn something from it. A helical pile consists of a hollow steel shaft with one or more helical plates welded to it. This type of pile is screwed into the ground by a hydraulic torque head. The entire installation process can be completed within 10 minutes. The helical plate enlarges the bearing area and facilitates the pile installation. However, the axle failure mechanisms are therefore complicated. When a helical pile is loaded to failure, the helical plates may behave independently or collaboratively. The current understanding suggests that we may assume individual bearing mode when the interhelix spacing is greater than three times of helix diameter. Otherwise, the soil between two helical plates may act as a cylinder shearing against the surrounding soil. CFEM adopted this crude criteria for all types of soils because of a limited research. Field load tests are most commonly used to study the axial behavior of helical piles. As shown in this photo, a test pile and a hydraulic jack are fitting a loading frame for a field load test. Such a test usually comes with the very high cost and the physical limitations. For example, very large piles and impractical in-situ conditions Centrifuge modeling may overcome all of these limitations 
and provide a viable tool to study the actual behavior of helical piles. This is the running geotechnical centrifuge in the GeoSurf lab at our university. A test package is mounted to the platform of this centrifuge. The spinning at a designated speed will produce the required elevated artificial gravity in the test package. By elevating the gravity in the test package by n, the stress distribution in a prototype soil can be reproduced in a soil model whose depth is only one nth of it. Therefore, we can use a way smaller model to simulate a full-scale fill load test. As of now, the centrifuge modeling technique of uh, helical piles in clay is very underdeveloped. A feasible technique to protect these tiny instrumented model piles and collect data during spinning is not available yet. And the study of axial load distributions and failure modes of helical piles is very limited. In view of the state of research, we proposed the following objectives. First, build a test package to install and load model helical piles on centrifuge. Then develop a technique to obtain the installation torque and axle load distributions during spinning. And with the data and other results collected in the test using two different clay models, explore the axle failure modes subject to soil strength. In the meantime, the pore pressure in the soil models will be monitored to improve our understanding of the excess pore pressure induced by pile installation. This photo to the upper left shows an overview of the install and load system. The soil container was mounted on a centrifuge platform and an electrical actuator sits on top of the container. The actuator serves as the loading frame. As shown in the photo to the upper right, it consists of a vertical movement carriage, a constant RPM gear motor, and a displacement transducer. During the pile installation, the carriage enables vertical advancing of the model pile connected to the gear motor, and simultaneously, the motor rotates the pile into the soil. As for axle loading, the motor is replaced with a strong adapter that firmly connects the pile to the carriage, and then the pile is pushed or pulled until failure. One single helix model pile and three double helix model piles with various interhelix spacing were made. Two oppositely positioned slots were cut along the shaft of each model pile. The string gauges were glued at the bottom of the slots, wired, and then covered with three layers of protection. MB coating, Teflon tape, and epoxy fill. The wires are also buried in the slots as shown in a diagram in the lower right. Then these wires were let out of the slots from near the pile head. In the end, the epoxy surfaces were polished with fine sandpaper and soft cloth. Five or six half bridge string gauge circuits are installed on each pile for axle force measurement. One full bridge circuit is installed at the head of each pile for installation torque measurement. The axle string gauge circuits are inclination compensated and the torque string gauge circuits are axle string compensated. Two soil models were made through consolidation, starting from a Kelly Knight slurry. Both slurries have much higher water content than the liquid limit and the slurries were prepared in a vacuum mixer so that air bubbles were completely removed. The target undrain shear strength of these two soil models should fall in the range of medium clay and stiff clay, respectively. Shunt step equation was used to guide the consolidation. In the end, the final consolidation pressure turned out to be 
750 kPa for the medium clay and 1500 kPa for the stiff clay. 8 pile installations and the following axle loading tests were performed in each soil model, including one compression test and one tension test for each of P1, P2, and P3, and two compression tests for P4. All piles were installed at the depth of 150 mm, starting from the tip of the lower helical plates. Two pore pressure transducers were buried to the depth of 100 mm and 150 mm, respectively, near P1 and P4. The test procedures are shown as a flow chart. First, we set up the soil container and the loading frame on the centrifuge, then spin up the centrifuge for one night to allow the pore pressure in the clay to stabilize. After that, spin down the centrifuge and immediately do three sets of uh, venture tests before the effective stress in the clay changes significantly. Then spin up the centrifuge again and maintain at 20 G for 30 minutes to allow for the pore pressure recovery. Then install four piles during spinning. After pile installation, spin over another night to allow for the recovery of the disturbed soil. Then perform the load test. After the load test, spin down and immediately conduct another three sets of uh, venture tests. After that, Uninstall the piles. The soil profiles are developed based on the vent shear tests and the consolidation parameters. The peak under shear strength at the embedment depth of the bottom helical plates for these two soils is about 45 kPa and 130 kPa which can be considered as medium and stiff clay, respectively. The sensitivity of these two clays ranges from 2.5 to 3.5, so we can say these two clays are not sensitive. However, it may still make a big difference when the relative soil pile displacement is large. During pile installation, the helical plate cuts through the soil. The torque resistance is contributed by the clay shaft adhesion and the clay helix adhesion. The cutting edge normal resistance is neglected since the blades of the helical plates were sharpened. In the industry, the clay helix interaction for the leading helix is usually assumed to be controlled by the peak undershear strength since it is cutting through intact soil. However, my torque measurements and calculation based on the residual shear strength show great agreement. Meanwhile, the calculation by assuming that the leading helix feels peak undering shear strength is 50% greater than the measurement. Therefore, I claim that the residual undering shear strength dominated all of the clay pile interactions during the pile installation. On some occasions, helical piles are instantly loaded after installation. As a result, the axle capacity may be significantly reduced by the very high excess pore pressure caused by pile installation. The dramatically deformed clay near the pile shaft produces huge excess pore pressure instantaneously and then dissipate in the radial directions into the far field. The two pore pressure transducers recorded the pore pressure response to two pile installations. In order to assess the pore pressure behavior at the pile surface, a theoretical solution proposed by Randolph and Roth was adopted to calculate the pore pressure response at the locations of the transducers. The calculation shows much greater initial excess pore pressure but the later progression agree with the measurements. This is very likely because of the installation method of our pore pressure transducers. A borehole was drilled with the tube 
and then the saturated transducers were put at the bottom. After that, the clay material inside the tube was pushed back into the borehole. Therefore, the backfill may have much lower strength than the surrounding intact soil, and thus couldn't sustain the huge excess pore pressure. Nonetheless, the majority of the progression agreed with the theoretical solution, so that the solution was confidently used to estimate the excess pore pressure at the power surface. The results show even higher initial excess pore pressure, but the decay is also faster and the later progression shows negligible change. The complete dissipation time is approximately six days for both power surface and where the transducers were installed. The piles were pulled out of the soil after axle load test. We can clearly see IBM and the CSM failure mode from the photos. The failure modes show great difference between the medium clay and the stiff clay. The stiffer clay tends to form a longer soil stack against the movement of the helix. And a new failure mode is identified for P3 in the medium clay. This transitional failure mechanism may cause a reduction of the axle capacity, but quantitatively, we need axle load distributions for further assessment. The axle strain gauges obtained the load displacement curves for the corresponding cross sections of each pile. The load differential tells the load carried by the pile segments between the two strain gauge stations. P2 produced the biggest bearing capacity based on cylindrical failure. Load distributions per each pile segment is generated based on these curves. The load distribution per each pile segment at failure is compared with the estimated loads based on conventional soil mechanics including end bearing factor, breakout factor, and the shallow foundation bearing capacities. A term epsilon is used to denote the ratio of measured loads to estimated loads. The comparison implies that the clay shaft adhesion is ineffective within about one helix diameter above a helix. The shear force acting on the interhelix soil cylinder is well predicted and the boundary effect on the lower helix bearing capacity is suspected. P3 experienced transitional failure mode in the medium clay and individual bearing mode in the stiff clay. The comparison clearly shows that the helix bearing capacity affected by the transitional failure mode is 16% smaller than the estimation, whereas the actual single play bearing capacity should be 15% greater than the estimation. Similarly, the helix uplift capacity affected by the transitional failure mode is 22% smaller than the estimation, whereas the actual single play uplift capacity should be 6% greater than the estimation. Overall, we can claim that the transitional failure mode reduced the axle capacity of the affected helix by approximately 30%. Based on the previously presented test results and discussions, we may come to the following conclusions. An install and load system has been built for helical power tests on centrifuge. It provides an effective tool to study the axle behavior of helical piles. Residual and shear strength dominated the pile installation behavior. Cylindrical shear mode requires a smaller S over D ratio to be mobilized in stiffer clay. Transitional failure mode was observed in the medium clay, so there may not exist any 
critical S over D ratio that strictly distinguishes individual bearing mode from cylindrical shear mode. The transitional failure mode may cause an overprediction of axle capacity, so care must be taken when designing a multi helix pile with S over D ratio around 2.5 in medium clay. This project was funded by NSERC under the collaborative R&D program and Alameda Piling Inc. I really appreciate the help and the guidance offered by Gonzalo Zambrano, Ya Zhao Wang, Jacob Brandel, Dimitro Pantov, and Gilbert Wong. The development of the centrifuge lab facilities was supported primarily by the Canada Foundation for Innovation. Uh, thank you, Wei Dong, for your excellent presentation. Now we'll enter into our Q&A session. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I don't see anyone yet. I have uh, one question from I too. One is from Tony. He just sent uh, his um, presentation, uh, his question privately to me. Mm. So his question is, for the undrained shear strength profile produced by the wind shear, did you use the same location but at different depths or at different locations? Oh, the the wind shear tests were spread across the uh, entire um, cross section of the soil, like the plan view of the soil, just in, just uh, near the wall of the wall of the uh, box. This, the the locations of the boreholes of wind shear tests were selected to avoid any interaction between the position where the piles to be located. So uh, 12 locations were selected for the borehole test and uh, each borehole is tested at uh, five, five to six depth. So we can get a vertical profile of the undrained shear strength peak and residual for, the, um, for each of the clay model. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one from Dongming. Did you conduct testing in remote natural clay? Um, the it's not natural clay. Say, it's a produced um, kaolin kaolinite powder, and I mixed uh, mixed it with the uh, with water and uh, started with a slurry to consolidate into a medium and the stiff clay. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one's from Mora. Are there research on the scale effect? Will the failure mode change with the full size pile? A uh, scale effect um, is is uh, is only uh, consider considerable when the the particle size of the soil is comparable with the size of the structure. Since the particle of the clay is uh, way smaller than the diameter of the pile, so the scale effect may not be a problem. And the filler mode change with the full size pile, and I think the because the uh, vertical effective stress of the of the soil model in the centrifuge is uh, simulate uh, is able to simulate the prototype soil dis, uh, effective stress distribution. So I think the filler mode is reliable for us to to use it to predict to predict the filler modes in the field. All right, thank you. I um, have uh, another question from Dong Ming. He asked that, how do you consider the size effect between, so actually I think it's the same question from Mora. And um, so next one is from Kevin. Uh, from his experience, um, he noticed that um, with the helical piles, so one of the biggest issue that industry has um, recommend that helical pile is the lack of um, um, our ability to effectively monitor and quantify their installation strength. This uh, seems to be further complicated by your observation that at the installation, we are at the residual undrained shear strength. Can you potentially discuss how we might be able to effectively monitor the installation 
of helical piles without simply doing a ton of load tests. So how can you extend mm. your experiments to the, the practical situation? Yeah, in the industry, the the power load, uh, the power installation torques are very important because they usually use that as a pre preliminary design tool because they can use the installation torque of the pile to predict the axle bearing capacity or uplift capacity. Um, since we, since our understandings of the axle load filler mechanisms were very uh, limited, so the prediction based on axle load filler mechanism is actually even less precise than the um, design method based on the installation torque, which is a which is a um, empirical method. Um, since our um, installation torque here uh, was proved or was uh, observed to be dominated by the residual energy shear strength, so we can just, you uh, um, I mean, effectively monitor the helical pile installation. That's gonna be a problem. I, I, I would say with this, this kind of axle load modeling of the behavior of helical piles can improve our, our uh, ability to design the pile based on the saw mechanics, uh, which should be, more, should be more precise should be, and should be better than the torque methods. So, so um, in the future with more, more re related research, we can just improve, we can just uh, focus on the um, design with the with the axle low filler mechanism and only use the installation installation torque as a verification method. Okay, thank you, Weidong, for your explanations. And um, now I think there's no more question coming up. I think we are going to conclude this um, presentation and this seminar um, before the end of the seminar, do we have any other announcements? If, if no, I think thank you everyone for joining us in this seminar. And uh, I'm looking forward to see all of you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Wei Thank you, Kevin.